Well, hello there. It is Catherine Langman here with you on the Productpreneur Success podcast. Welcome to the show if you are a new listener. And of course, welcome back to our longtime listeners. Fabulous to have you back here. Recently, I've been speaking to quite a few e-commerce brand owners about, you know, how tough they're finding it, you know, trying to generate sales and get traffic to their website consistently over the last couple of months. I think between the drop in consumer confidence, maybe leading up into the federal election that we've finally just had, uh, maybe the increase in our cost of living, uh, maybe a couple of school holidays, well, the, the last school holidays with two long weekends in a row. Uh, there's a, a lot of reasons, I'm sure, leading to uh, lower sales than usual, and it has been a common experience pretty much across the board. But what is also happening is business owners adopting the mindset that customers just aren't spending at all and that, uh, you know, the only way to get through is to deep discount or to cut all the spending, to ride things out as lean as possible. And uh, really, I feel like maybe there are a lot of people who are either have forgotten what it was like or maybe not experienced what it was like prior to this COVID-induced fury of e-commerce shopping behaviour over the last couple of years. Because back before everyone was forced by lockdowns to shop online, we typically had to work, as business owners, we typically had to work a little bit harder with our marketing and get a little bit more creative with our, our promotional activities in order to really drive the consistent revenue growth that we all want. And now that we're all living more freely again, as uh, you know, in our society, our consumer behavior is just not the same as it was during COVID lockdowns. And really as business owners, we need to readjust how we do our marketing. And as a result, what I'm not seeing enough of or a lot of is uh, business owners doing the kind of marketing that really gives customers a reason to buy from them on their website. So perhaps not everyone around the country or, or the world is needing to shop as much as they did right before, right now. But I can guarantee you, just as the sun will come up tomorrow, consumers don't all suddenly stop buying everything completely. And so when they do need to buy what you sell, you really want to be at the forefront in their mind so that they give their business to you. And so that means in many cases, getting a little bit cleverer and a little bit more strategic with your marketing and promotional planning. And so in today's episode, I'm going to be sharing with you how I go about planning my promotional calendar so that you can hopefully crush your goals for the rest of 22 and really put yourself in a, you know, an excellent healthy position to dominate when Q4 comes around, which is always the biggest uh, sales period in the e-commerce promotional calendar. All right. So the first, we're going to go through kind of three main kind of stages in the planning out your e-commerce marketing and promotional calendar. And the first part I really want you to think about is locking away the biggest campaigns that you're going to be running during the year. So when it comes to e-commerce marketing, you're typically going to have what we call like an always on funnel. And then you're also going to have uh, time limited promotions or product launches. And we really want to have both, right? So you always want to have some marketing running that is going to consistently drive traffic and sales to your website, something that's going to be always building uh, awareness and building consumer demand for what you sell. But then you need to also think about putting in the kind of marketing that gives people a reason to buy right now. So for, for this part, I want you to start by, and it can help by getting out a like either a printed annual calendar, or you could do it um, in a spreadsheet, which is what I love to do because I love Excel. Uh, I know not everybody loves Excel as much as I do, but anyway, find a way where you can really kind of look at the year as a big picture uh, as a whole. And the first thing that you want to do is to lock away four major promotions in a year. And this could be either a product launch you know, whether it's a new product to your range or you might be doing almost like a relaunch if it's a kind of a seasonal sort of thing. Uh, or it could be a really big promotion like your Black Friday type size promotion. OK, so you really want to have four really big promotions in a year. And when I say really big, we want to go out with a lot more song and dance and put a lot more effort into planning all of the detail for these sorts of big promotions. Uh, and we, we add in more steps for these as well compared to perhaps some smaller things, which we'll talk about in a minute. And so in the lead up to your four big promotions, 
you're going to be doing some kind of a list building, audience building effort, uh, such as, you know, um, running a giveaway or something along those lines. Uh, sometimes people will get lists in other ways, whether it's like at, a, at an expo or, at, you know, doing some sort of a, an online collaboration type uh, event, but something that's really going to build your list. Uh, there's some fantastic apps that really do uh, an amazing job at building lists really fast as well. Uh, we love Wheelio, so long as you uh, do a good job of customizing that to, to match your brand. Anyway, uh, so list building effort. Hopefully the reason for that is obvious. We want to be using our email list as much as possible because it is going to give you the highest returns. So before you go into any major promotion, you definitely want to have a list building effort. Uh, we want to re be trying to go out with multiple different uh, channels of communication around big promotions. So we absolutely are going to be sending a lot more emails during this sort of a promotion. Uh, you definitely want to be running a couple, at least a couple of paid traffic channels. So whether it's, you know, Instagram or Facebook being one and Google being another, uh, you might do some extra effort such as designing and building a really um, well-optimized landing page or a blog so that you've got some SEO traffic coming in, but it's also designed really nicely to convert, you know, get people from that landing page or blog into your store and to purchase as well. Uh, and, you know, maybe looking at collaborating on a, on a, um, to get more eyeballs on the promotion as well. So whether it's with, uh, other brand or e-commerce business owners who share your audience but are not in competition or with influencers uh, or brand reps or all of the above uh, to get, you know, a bit more reach uh, in terms of the number of eyeballs that are going, as I said, are going to see your event, uh, your promotional um, that you're running. So these four big promotions, like I said, you're going to be putting a lot more thought into these. Uh, you're going to be doing things like you know, perhaps getting some photography or some videography. So working with some content creators there or photographers, uh, you're going to be getting some design work done to, to get all of the assets that you need to use in your promotion. So, you know, graphics for your website and for your emails and your social media content and all of that kind of good stuff. So you can see it's a fair bit of effort. Um, when it comes to running that sort of a large promotion, um, I definitely want to be planning ahead in terms of, uh, you know, the, the goals, traffic and revenue goals, the number of orders that you want to get, how, you know, how are you going to um, motivate people to buy? It doesn't have to be an incentive. Obviously, if you're launching something new, you wouldn't necessarily put it, be putting a big discount on that. Uh, but, you know, there might be other promotions where you are working on incentives. So really putting a lot of thought into planning that. So if you do this just as an aside if you do want to have a lot more help in how to plan and execute a uh, promotion like this a big campaign uh, I do have a training bundle available to kind of teach you the step-by-step -step process and give you templates and ca uh, calculator tools and all sorts of good stuff so if you if you're looking for a little bit of help on that you can just head to productpreneuracademy.com and it's in the short courses section it's just 197 dollars anyway moving on so once you've got those four big pro uh, promos in your 12-month calendar Hopefully you're kind of already along the lines of thinking, I'm going to do one per quarter because it's quite a bit of effort. So if you can do that and it, that works out, then that's going to help you manage your time and energy throughout the year as well. Um, and, and I guess just one last tip there, when you are kind of working on those big things, you want to try and line up any um, promotional partners you might need well in advance. So if you are going to work with content creators or influencers or brand reps or anything like that, you can't be dropping this stuff on people like that at the last minute. They're going to have things locked down already. So you want to try and book these things in advance. All right. So around the bigger promotions like that, you want to be making sure that you have other smaller promotions running throughout the year. And typically, you know, when we're running our, all of these, this kind of systematic um, marketing for our e-commerce clients, we have something going every week. Sometimes it is uh, like a theme that we have running for a whole month. Sometimes we'll just have something going for a week or maybe two weeks. But essentially, we want to be looking at how can we 
kind of break up the year into months and weeks and have something going out all of the time. And this does not mean that you have to have a discount going out all the time, because if you do that, especially if you're really just resorting to using, you know, email subject lines uh, and ad, ads or, or content on social that is like 20% off this week. I mean, it's not particularly inspiring, right? Whereas I uh, want to do a bit of a shout out to one of our clients, uh, Ashley from frenchsoda.com.au, which is such a great fun brand uh, for kids. That she is um, doing a promotion right now called Mayhem. And uh, sorry, big, big pardon, Messy May, Messy Play May. Um, getting ahead of myself here. And so for her, her brand is uh, beautiful, great fun, bright, vibrant colors, uh, um, outdoor rain gear. So raincoats and gumboots for kids. And, you know, a big part of the the mission for her brand is to really encourage kids to get outside even when it's cold and wet to play and get dirty and messy and creative and having fun outdoors and you know jumping in muddy puddles and doing all of that good stuff that kids love to do and, and parents hate to clean up after but um you know so being able to kind of put this theme around the promotion and you know that then led on to some really great fun content to be created for blog and for emails and for ads and for social media content and uh you know this you know just has so much scope for what can go out every single time uh she's reaching out to her audience and um and so she's got some special bundle offers that you can only get uh, if you go to the, the uh, this Messy Play May landing page. And uh, you can also go in the run, running to win something as well. So there's a whole lot of stuff that's happening and it's all themed around this theme of Messy Play May, which has really kind of led to how it, uh, the promotion gets executed. And, uh, you know, I don't want to give away private data, but I can say that she's um, really been able to achieve some much uh, better results than the same time last year. So, uh, which is obviously what we want to be comparing to. So you want to think about how can you break up the rest of the year around your really major promotional and uh, events and product launches into smaller ones, whether they go for a whole month, whether they go for a week or a couple of weeks, uh, so that you can have something new and different going out to your list. If you're going to try and sustain a promotion for a month, you, you have to have enough um, variety of of content, you know, being able to break up the the uh, the offers, the the content, the angles, the the uh, visuals, uh, so that you know it's not the same emails going out to your list every single time. So you've got to be able to you know give people a lot of variety there to really give people a reason to buy. Um, and then you know the other thing that you can do as well. So obviously, if you're going to be doing something small on a weekly basis you know, give, as an example, something that I see a lot of big e-commerce retailers do, you know, you can kind of tell if you're on their email list, you can kind of tell when they, they need to make bank at the end of the week, because they'll roll out like a, a free express shipping this weekend only type thing, right? So, um, you know, that's what I would classify as something that's a bit of a smaller offer, as opposed to maybe Messy Play May, which is a little bit bigger. Um, but really what you want to be able to do is reach your customers in the variety of different communication touch points that they are going to be um, connecting to you via. So uh, obviously email is a really big one. You might also be already collecting um, phone numbers to use with SMS marketing in Klaviyo. Uh, not that I would be doing that every single week, but perhaps for a more um, comprehensive promotion, you would use that. Uh, but also with your advertising. So something that we uh, like to, to do and to suggest for uh, ads running on Facebook and Instagram is that you can have a warm traffic ad campaign set up so that you've got all your warm audiences in there. It's got it like the campaign is always running, but in the ad section, you can change out what the, the um, you can, you know, duplicate the ad that's running and change out the content to the newest uh, promotion or incentive or offer that you're rolling out this week or this month so that it just makes it really simple and easy for you to always have uh, an ad strategy to be able to communicate whatever the latest promotion or offer is with your audience. Obviously, if you're doing a really big promotion, you'd definitely be running cold traffic ads as well. Um, but perhaps for something smaller that's on a weekly basis, then you might not do that. 
Uh, you can also, you, you know, if you're putting together some really good content for posting on your organic socials, uh, whether it's Facebook or Instagram or, or whatever, you can also just take that post and use that in the ad. So you don't actually have to create anything new. So hopefully that gives you a good tip there. Uh, so once you've got all of that down pat, you should have something in your calendar pretty much every week. So you want to be going out with at least one new email every single week to your list. And what we really recommend is that you then resend that email on a different day and time later in the week to everyone who did not open the first one. So two kind of touch points on email minimum every single week. And uh, then if you are doing those really big major promotions, you're gonna be emailing even more than that as well. Now, the third part of this planning process uh, to really get you some fantastic uh, traffic and revenue growth as the year progresses um, is to track your statistics, track your metrics. You know, we need to be getting into the habit of doing this. I know some of you are getting really good at this, perhaps some of you not so much yet. So I really want to make sure that you are all and when I say track, I actually mean recording it somewhere. So not just looking at it, because I think a lot of a lot of us are pretty keen to, you know, every day we get up, we sit down at our desk and we open our Shopify dashboard and we have a look at what's going on. I don't mean that. Obviously, um, you know, we, we all want to be doing that. But I mean, literally on the same day every week, sit down and record your, uh, your performance metrics across all of your marketing in a spreadsheet or somewhere where you can actually see the trends happening over time. And also where you can note down uh, any other kind of observations that you had about whatever you rolled out with your marketing that week. So for instance, you know, if you see that this week, my revenue from my emails really tanked, then you can start having a look at, okay, well, what was different about my email this week? You know, maybe was it the offer that really sucked or was it the fact that I just didn't get the email itself right? Maybe the subject line was, um, you know, not great and it either landed in the spam folder or perhaps it just was not very inspiring and people just didn't open it. Or maybe, you know, I've seen a few emails recently coming out where, I have to keep scrolling for a million years before I even buy, find a, a button to click. And it's just, you know, these emails are not making it easy to buy. So I just kind of give up and, and go somewhere else. So you want to start uh, reviewing your, your performance metrics, noting them down on a regular weekly basis so that you can track the trends, but also trying to think uh, critically uh, to get those sorts of insights out, out of what you've been doing so that you can improve. And you know, this kind of scientific approach where, where you are uh, starting with a plan of attack, you know, here's my hypothesis, this is what I think is gonna help me get better results. You implement it all, then you track and monitor the results and then you learn from that data so that you can do better next time. It's really crucial when it comes to growing an e-commerce business. Uh, and so, you know, doing that, observing the trends, we like to, to look at things like, um, you know, taking things like uh, subject line and pre-header text in conjunction with each other. What are the trends that are increasing the open rates on emails? And then looking at the click-through rate of your email. You know, if I um, present my content one way versus another way, you know, if I maybe use dynamic product widgets or if I really make the, the offer a little bit more obvious, if I put price points in uh, or take them out, like what is getting the best click-through rates. And then also looking at the landing pages that you're sending the emails to as well. Can you find any insights there that the data is telling you that might be um, indicating a higher or lower conversion rate once people get to your website? It's all well and good to think that, you know, once you've built your website, it's, it's done and it's as good as it can be and you don't have to change anything. Of course, that's not really how it is. Um, so we always want to be trying to find ways to improve the conversion rate once people are on the website as well. Uh, so, you know, it might be that you notice, in fact, you can actually go into your Google Analytics and you can do a search in there to see what your highest converting web pages are. Sometimes it's really surprising and there might be some things that you can learn around, um, you know, whether it's product descriptions or the call to actions or, uh, you know, if it's a landing page, how is it designed and laid out? Is there some really, something really um, 
crucial or glaringly obvious that you can see that is really contributing to a higher conversion rate versus a lower one once people are on your website. And then, you know, hopefully you can see over time you'll be able to learn from those insights. But the other thing that I really want you to take out from what I'm talking about here is by really approaching your e-commerce uh, marketing uh, and your promotional calendar in this way, you are going to be giving people a reason to buy that wasn't there before, right? Because you have these promotional events on, you have, uh, you know, you, you know, you, you might be theming some promotions around something that really gives people a reason to buy. Like, you know, some parents might be thinking, oh yeah, I probably need to order my kid a, a raincoat, but I'll get, get onto that later. But then all of a sudden there's messy play may going on and you think, oh gosh, absolutely. I want to get my kid off their iPad. I want them to be outside. I think that's going to be, you know, fantastic for my kid's health and development and uh, creativity and intelligence and all of that kind of stuff. And, and there's a special offer on right now. I can get this bundle deal. I'm going to do it. So you're giving people a reason to buy that's getting them off the couch, getting them to act and take action and closing the deal a little bit more often than if you don't have any of this kind of stuff running. The other thing that I just want to say that we've observed this year, and I think I've said this on the podcast before, is that we have absolutely noticed this year that the more generic kind of promotions like Mother's Day, sadly, and Easter and stuff like that just did not really shift the needle all that much with a lot of consumers it's like maybe because it was so common in our inboxes and all over uh, the internet and social media you know there was so much uh, content around Easter and around Mother's Day that you know nothing really stood out nothing really kind of cut through the clutter whereas when you have a promotional theme uh, a promotional title like Messy Play May which is different you kind of take a bit more notice so we are seeing uh, a bit of difference that way in terms of the most successful promotions. Uh, so yeah, hopefully that gives you a really good um, overview uh, for this episode. I really hope that I've been able to give you a little bit of insight and inspiration today around how you can plan for growth, how you can plan for success throughout the rest of this year and beyond. Uh, and I do actually have uh, a couple more training bond bundles as well that might be useful if you do want to have a little bit more step-by-step uh, -step help. So I have, um, you know, I have a, a, an e-commerce marketing planning bundle and I also have a email marketing one as well. So if you are really wanting to up the ante with building your email list and sending the right emails and planning the right kind of promotions to send out to your email list as well, uh, that's what that one's all about. So if you really need a little bit of help um, to plan and implement and monitor your results with all of this kind of stuff, uh, you can grab either of those bundles. Uh, they're both just $197. You can find out more about them or purchase them by heading to productpreneuracademy.com and it's in the short courses section of the menu as well. So hopefully that really helps. Or of course, if you are keen for some help uh, with all any of this kind of marketing stuff, you can always give us a shout whether you're looking for coaching to help you learn and implement things or if you're looking to outsource to a team of experts, you can uh, always get some help from us. Just head over to productpreneurmarketing.com and you can book in for a free strategy session with my team. That's it for today. And I hope that you have enjoyed that episode and I look forward to being with you again next week. Bye for now.